Each time you meditate, you should stop and take stock of your mind. What kind of mind are you bringing to the meditation? Is it ready to settle down with the breath, or does it need a little adjusting? The Buddha talks about three ways you can adjust the mind. Gladdening the mind, steadying the mind, releasing the mind. And so what does your mind need just now? If it's already glad, already steady, then it's a question of just releasing. In other words, putting aside your concerns of the day and getting it onto business with the breath. But sometimes it needs a little preparation. The Buddha talks about two things that have an impact on shaping your mind. One is feeling and the other is perception. And so the feelings you want to encourage, of course, are feelings of rapture and well-being, ease and pleasure. Especially if there's pain in part of the body, you want to be able to create a sense of pleasure someplace else. So the pain doesn't hold the starring rule in your body right now. You can carve out another part of the body where you can actually make it pleasant. So look for it. It may not be all that outstanding to begin with. Just a simple sense of well-being can be something that falls very easily into the background. So try to bring it to the foreground. Where do things feel okay in the body right now? And think of softening up the edges around that okay area. And in doing this, you'll be using the breath to help get the mind into good shape. In other words, you're not quite ready to really settle down yet, but you can work with the breath. And working with the breath this way, you can actually get engrossed in it. Find the spots that have a potential for feeling good, for feeling full. And give them their space. As you breathe in, try not to put any pressure on them. As you breathe out, put no pressure on them. And that's one way of gladdening the mind. You've got a good place to stay, a comfortable place to stay. The other way, of course, has to do with perceptions. And this can deal, of course, with perceptions of the breath. But you can also bring in other ways of thinking right now. The Buddha recommends certain recollections that help you gladden the mind. Recollection of the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, those are the traditional ones. Recollections of your own virtue. The times when you could very easily broken a precept, but you didn't. That's something that uplifts the mind. Times when you were generous and you didn't have to be. Those uplift the mind as well. As for the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, there's a really nice passage where there's a monk out in the forest, and he's fallen ill. And he asks himself, what am I going to do? And he tells himself, I'm going to take the example of the, the great meditators of the past and use the Dharma to cure my illness. The five strengths, the seven factors for awakening, the Brahma Viharas. The Brahma Viharas are a very useful tool for gladdening the mind. You can put the mind in a good frame of mind simply by reminding yourself that you re really do wish everybody well. And that means people are behaving in horrible ways right now. You're wishing that they would change their ways, because by continuing to behave in horrible ways, they're not going to be happy. And that's an attitude you're going to have for anybody without hypocrisy. And you find that it uplifts the mind. 
Same with thoughts of compassion, thoughts of empathetic joy. Thoughts of equanimity right now, you can say, I have to put the whole rest of the world aside because I've got some business I've got to do right now. That can take a burden off the mind as well. As for steadying the mind, again, working with the feeling of well-being someplace in the body can give you something that you really do want to focus on. As the sense of fullness gets greater and greater, you can find it really riveting. As for perceptions, one really useful one is the perception of death. If your mind is wandering around all over the place, you can ask yourself, is this the state of mind I would like to have in my mind when I die? And you know that death could come at any time. This is say in Thailand that gives you no sign ahead of time. You don't wake up in the morning with a notice. So okay, today is the day you're going to die. When death comes, it just sort of tears things out of your life. I received a letter today from a woman in Taiwan whose, whose husband passed away suddenly. And the point that struck her more than anything else was that she didn't have a chance to say goodbye. He just kind of disappeared out of her life. So death doesn't have any manners. You have to ask yourself, are you ready to go? What in your mind would drag you down at that point? Well, work on that. You've got work to do. When the Buddha talks about being in the present moment, he does talk about the pleasure of being in the present moment, how not having to worry about the past and future lightens the mind. But at the same time, he says that you're in the present moment because there's work that needs to be done and you don't know how much time you've got to do it. That's the main thrust of his passages on being in the present moment. You don't just be here, you work. You've got duties to do, things to clear out of your mind. And that thought can focus you, because you realize that all your other concerns of the, of the day would be totally meaningless at that point. And you're face to face with what you've got in your mind, the habits you've developed the skills or a lack of skills. So you want to work right now on the skills you're going to need. As for releasing the mind, that comes in stages. The first issue, of course, is releasing the mind from, as I say in the books, sensuality and unskillful mental qualities. Sensuality here means your fascination with thinking about sensual pleasures. Unskillful qualities have to do with everything from wrong view through wrong mindfulness. So you can check what needs work in the mind. How are your resolves right now? That's an important one that's very much directly connected to your, your concentration practice. Is the mind thinking about how much it wants to find more sensual pleasures? Do you have some old ill will for somebody, thoughts of harm for somebody? Learn to dig them out. And John Lee, in some of his books, before he talks about practicing breath meditation, he talks about contemplating the body. This is our means by which we have sensual pleasures. But what do we have? look inside and there's not much that you'd really like to claim, lay claim to. So you want to get a sense of being distanced from your sensual desires. You don't have to eradicate them right away, but just take some distance from them. So I'd really like to put the mind in a state 
what doesn't need to depend on this body and all the unreliable things that the body can do. Of course, paradoxically, we work with the body first so we can go beyond it. Just like we have to work with suffering before we can go beyond it, we have to work with the body. The pains in the body, our attachments to the body. But we also work with the breath. The Buddha wasn't totally down on the body. He just said, learn how to use it well. There are potentials here in the body that you can take advantage of. And so gaining an interest in those potentials can pull you away from your interest in sensuality or old issues about who did what to you and how you resent it. That way you can release the mind. So it's in this way we use fabrication to get beyond unskillful fabrications. The Buddha did say that there are some causes of suffering in the mind that go away when you simply look at them, which is why you can get some results from the techniques that have you simply look at things and accept them, that they're there. But there are a lot that don't go away. Continue with the image. When you stare at them, they stare right back. But if you learn how to use fabrication in this way, things like directed thought, evaluation, or working with your feelings, working with your perceptions, you find that you can get a handle on things. You're not totally passive in the present moment. You're not totally the victim of things that are coming at you. You're already playing a shaping role, so learn how to do it in, with skill, with finesse. That way, in taking stock of your mind, you're not just sitting with what you've got, but you can change what you've got using the skills that you're developing. So the mind is really your friend. It's on your side as you settle down. <laughs>